This is a compression spring created in Creo 3. Uh, it has ground and closed ends, and what that means is a grind ground end is the ends of the spring are, are hit with a grinder, and it leaves uh, material removed. This one has, particular one has 290 degrees of grind. That means it's 290 degrees all the way around here. Both ends are ground, and both their ends are closed, and that just means that the first two coils are touching. So these two coils are touching these first two, so it has one on that end and one on this end. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate how easy it is to change and create a new spring. So this is my template spring. So to create a new one, I just copy it and start modifying the dimensions. Every dimension on this spring is controlled by nominal dimensions. This nominal dims uh, group here. If I edit that, I get every dimension that controls this spring. So down to the wire diameters down here. There's the wire diameter. I'm going to change the wire diameter to 0.3. And I'm going to change also the length. I'm going to make this say 50. So I got a 50 length. Also the outside diameter controlled here. I'm going to make it three. The number of coils is controlled by this angle. So I'm going to need 25 coils. So I'll put 25. There's my coils. And also on this particular spring, I'm going to need more more uh, closed ends. This one has a single that's controlled by this. It shows one. That means one closed end per side. So if I want, in this particular case, I'm going to need three. And it puts three closed ends on for me. If you look, the number of coils hasn't changed. It's constant. And while I'm making these all these changes, it just changes how they're placed. It doesn't change the number of them. The number of coils is constant. So let me regenerate that. And that's how easy it is to, to create a new spring. And if you wanted a different grind, it's also in there. If I wanted, like, say, uh, a 180, 180 degree grind, 180, it'll do that. A half of 360 is 180, so it's going to give you half of uh, half the coil. Is going to be ground. Most springs are between uh, 300 and 270, so I'm going to make this one 290 and regenerate. So that's how you can control every dimension on this spring with this one feature. All right, let's begin by creating a new part. I'll call it spring. And I don't want to use the default template. I'm just going to make a very empty part. No, no features in it. No, nothing set up. And I'm going to create some default datum planes. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a view that I might have to go back to. I'm going to have to reorient this. I need a side view, so for reference. So I'm going to set this to be the front. And for my top, I'm going to select datum 2. And I'm going to call this the side. Save it. That way I can come back in case I need to get back into that to show just for illustration. I'm going to select datum 3 and datum 2 here and select an axis. Create my axis there. I'm going to call that spring axis. And now what I'm going to do is create the sketch, the sketch curve. It's going to control all the driving dimensions for my spring. It's going to control everything except for one. I'm going to create two sketches, maybe three. But for now, just I'm just going to create a sketch representing the profile of spring. I'm going to sketch on datum three here and use datum one as uh, the right as default. I'm going to go to sketch view. And now I'm going to put my center line on the same location as my spring axis. So I put the center line here so I can create a, a, a symmetrical rectangle that's going to represent the spring, side view of the spring after it's been ground. So I'll select this point here and I got my symmetry arrows. I'm just going to right click and lock those so no matter what I do I got symmetry. And I'll put it out to here. I'm going to create a metric spring. I'm going to make it nine millimeters long and I'm going to need a diameter dimension for this to represent the outside diameter of my spring. So I'll select that axis a couple of times and get that. I'm going to make that five. So this is the side profile of my spring after it's been ground. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and put in my wire diameter that I'm going to need. I'm just going to place it down here somewhere. I'm going to set it to be 1. I'm using nice round numbers so I could explain the math. Then I'm going to go to Tangency and select this line and this circle and I get Tangency. I'm going to create a dimension that represents my grind material. How much material I'm going to need to grind. So right here, 75. So that's 3 quarters of 1. Okay, so I'm going to get 3 quarters um, of 360, which is 270 degrees of grind. If I set this to 0.5, that means that when I cut it off, I'm cutting off half the diameter. I'm going to get 180 degrees of grind. So this I'm going to be changing depending on how much grind I'm going to need. Most springs are not 180. They're in, they are generally 270 to 300. So I'm going to make this flexible. So I, could, I can even set this up where it gives me no grind. So we're going to set it up to do that. So now I'm going to create another axis, another center line, on the middle. When I get that middle highlighted, middle of that line, I'm going to click that, and now I'm going to create a vertical center line. Middle mouse, and select this circle here. And then I'm going to go to the mirror tool, and select this center line, because this has been pre-selected, and it's going to go to the center line. And the same is going to be both sides. So if this comes out more, that one will come out more. So if I change this to 0.75, just to make sure everything's working right. That one goes out 0.75. For now, we're going to just leave this half. And we're done with this. So let's finish up. And now, let's take a look at what we got. That's what we got for our driving sketch. This sketch curve is going to drive most of the dimensions in our spring. So let's go ahead and create our helical sweep. And for references, I'm going to define the helix sweep profile. And that's just where it's going, to, how it's going to travel. So I'm going to go to define. I'm going to use the previous sketch, same planes that I used to sketch this curve. I'm going to use again. So just use previous. I'm going to need my profile, how the the helix is going to travel from this center of this circle to the center of this circle. However, right now I got this line as a reference. I don't want these lines. I don't need them. I don't want them. So I'm going to go to my relations. I mean my my references, and I'm going to go ahead and delete them both. And now I'm going to select my circles. I want this circle and this circle. So now I can be assured that my line is not is only connected to the center of that and the center of that. And my start is on this side. So the arrow's right. Yeah, if you pick the wrong way, you can always right click on the button, right click on the point. There it is, start point. I need to change it, but I drew it from left to right, and that's how I want my spring to develop it that direction. So I'm going to select OK, and I'm, it's looking for another piece of information. It won't, it won't highlight my sketcher to get me into my, uh, my profile, so it won't let me into the sketcher until I select a axis of revolution. And I'm just going to select this axis, the spring axis, and now notice that this is lit up, and also it's been selected. Spring axis is the axis of revolution. So let's go to the sketcher and sketch our our, our section. It could be round. We're going to use we're going to use a round spring. So we'll just, we, it could be any shape you want, rectangular, whatever. We're going to use a round one, and I need to use this circle again as a reference. It's a sketch curve. Okay. So now I'm going to create a circle from the center of that out to say I'm going to go with the point. I could I could use the radius as equal. Or I can just move it around and maybe get the point. I'll use the point. So it's connected to that circle at that point. When I select OK, it is defaulted to 90. I'm going to make it uh, 1. And when I make it out to 1, my wire diameter is 1. So if my wire diameter is 1 and my pitch is 1, the coils will touch. And that's, what, what, that's the condition we want for both ends of our spring. We want the first two to touch, the last two to touch. That's what it means by closed ends. The ends are closed. When you see a spring that says closed and ground 270, that means the first two coils or the last two coils are closed and you have 270 degrees of grind. And we'll do calculations to get all that done. So now that we have that, uh, we, we're going to need that. We're going to need a pitch point here. We're going to need a pitch point here because we're going to be changing the pitch in the middle of the spring. We're going to have because we we know how we we know the number of coils in our spring, so we're going to have to calculate what the pitch is in this middle part because we know what it is between these two points. It's going to be one. So we're going to need to change the pitch here. We're going to need a pitch at the end. 
as the wire diameter, this pitch as a wire diameter, that will let these two guys touch, and then a pitch here and a pitch a wire diameter away, and that'll let these two cut touch, and then we're going to need another pitch point here and another pitch point over here to transition from our wire diameter pitch to our unknown pitch. And we're going to do some calculations to find that what that pitch value is, and also we're going to do a calculation to show where that that pitch point needs to go. So another thing that we need to know is that uh, if we have, I'm going to go to my uh, pitch here. I'm going to add a pitch. Right now it's just a constant pitch. If I add a pitch, it's going to put one at the end. It put one down here at the end, at the end point. No control over that. I'm going to make it the same as my start. Okay. So my start and stop is the same. Now that means that they're all touching. What happens if I have a different pitch point at the end? I'm going to make that five. So now I have a five uh, pitch at the end and a one pitch at the start. And let me switch this so you can see it better. Okay, there they are. Let me get rid of these datum planes too. So there's our pitch at the start and our pitch at the finish. So how many coils? If I know the distance between the start and the finish and the pitch points are different, the pitch values are different at both points, I could cal I need to calculate how many coils are between there. And I I'm going to need to do this later in my relations. So uh, I'm going to do it from the transition when I go from the, um, the pitch at uh, wire diameter, I'm going to have to go to that unknown pitch. I'm going to need to know how many coils are there, and that's going to be two different pitch points. So I'm, gonna, I'm illustrating this to show how you can calculate how many coils based on the starting pitch and the ending pitch, and if you know the distance, it's the average pitch. So if I take the pitches and average them, so this average is going to be 5 plus 1 divided by 2, and that's going to give me an average of 3. Well, the distance from these two points is exactly 9. So I should get 9, the number of coils is equal to the distance divided by pitch. So if I have a distance of 9 and a pitch of 3, I should have exactly 3 coils. And if I go back to my shaded, take a look, I can count them. From here to here is 1, 2, exactly 3. And if you use a whole number for your for your uh, for your number of coils, if you have a whole number, the surfaces of the start and the end will be on the same plane. So I could tell if you did, if it doesn't happen, if you're using a whole number for your for your number of coils, and you don't have this occurring, there's something wrong in your equation. So you have to go back and check your math. That's like that's like I said with whole numbers. So let's go back to the pitch points and let's go put them all in. I'm going to make them all one. These are all going to be driven by relations, so I'm just going to set them all for, at 1 for now. And as far as location goes, I just put this one by default in the middle. I'm just going to make it 1, and that's just going to put it a wire diameter away. This pitch point is going to be, I'm going to need another one here. I don't know the distance yet. I'm going to say maybe 2.5. I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to set the pitch value at 1 and location at 2.5. I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna show you how to do the calculations on where this this pitch point needs to go. And I'm gonna need that this mirrored. These three points. I'm gonna need a mirrored on this side. It's a little bit difficult because they're all based off of this side. So when I add the next one, I have to do the math and count. But like I said, this is all gonna be done in relations. So 575, close enough. I know what the last one's gonna be. It's the length minus one, a wire diameter. So it's gonna be eight. The last one's gonna be eight. And if I really wanted to make a mirror out of it, that's going to be 8, oh, 1, and this should be 8. And if I really want to do it right, this one is going to be, I did 1.5, so this should be 7, 6.5, just to make it a mirror. I mean, like I said, we're going to change these. The relations are always, because as the spring is compressed, this is going to be dynamically changed except for the start and the ends, but the, the pitch values and the pitch point location is going to vary as the spring is compressed. We're going to make a, a flexible spring, so those are going to vary. So now that we have all of these set, they're all set at 1, and they'll all be driven in the relations. So I'm just going to right click and show the dimensions. I'm going to switch to a no hidden so I can see them. And I'm going to give everything a name. If I'm going to use it in a relation, it's going to have be named. So this this location, I'm going to call LOC1. So I'll go to the properties, right click, properties, LOC underscore 1. This location is 2, so properties, LOC2, LOC. I use lowercase for all dimensions. 
uppercase for parameters in my relations. So I'm just going to make these all lowercase. Properties. This is location 3, LOC underscore 3. And the last one is this 8 over here. Go properties. This would be LOC 8. So there's uh, LOC 8, LOC 4, location 4. So I've got these four locations plus the start and the stop and the end, which is two more. So there's a total total of six locations, start, end, and then these points in between. So there's six locations, so there's going to be six pitches. So let's go ahead and name those properties of this one. I'm just going to call these PP underscore one pitch point location one. That's how I'm going to define them or name them rather properties and this is going to be pitch point underscore two so pp2 now I'm going to just verify I'm going to hit this I'm going to switch my symbols here switch dimensions so I can see what their, what their uh, uh, names are. I, by the way, I put that in my quick access tool, toolbar, but I think it's uh, uh, view maybe. Did I get it right? Or tools? Yeah, here they are. So I put a few things in my toolbar. I put switch dimensions. I put that here. I put the parameters and relations there. So I'm going to be using that a few times, So, but that's where they're located. So I've got location one, two, three, four. That's my four locations. Pitch point one, pitch point two, PP three, PP four. Okay, I verified it. I'll switch them back. Okay. Go back into the shaded mode. Just give it a quick regen, make sure nothing changed, and do a quick save. A couple other things I'm gonna name. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and name all my dimensions. This one here. It's going to be my wire diameter. I'm going to use lowercase for dimensions. Instead of diameter, just do DIA is good enough. Wire diameter. And this one here is going to be my outside diameter. I'm just going to call this right now HT. Because this is going to, later you'll see why this one's going to disappear. I'm going to change this. When it, when we get into flexibility, uh, it's a long story, so when we get there, we'll change it. This one I'll call my uh, grind material. Let's call it MAT, grind MAT. So I've got them all. Just switch my symbols to make sure. So wire diameter, grind material, HT, right through there, and uh, outside diameter. That's all. That's all I need to do. So now let's go to our relations start setting some relations up. Things that we know. Okay, things that we know about the helical sweep. Both of them. And let me go switch. Get this out of the way a little bit. Switch to no hidden so we can see this stuff. Let's put stuff that we know in our relations right now. The pitch at point one is going to be equal to the wire diameter. Pitch at point two is also going to be equal to the wire diameter. We don't know what three, the pitch at three and pitch at four, those are going to have to be calculated, but we do know pitch at five is going to be a wire diameter. And pitch of point six. It's also going to be a wire diameter. That's what we know, so might as well put that in. So let's uh, let's go put our locations in. Let's put the locations first. Location one is also going to be a di wire diameter.
location two is a little bit different. We're gonna have to calculate that, and I'm gonna show you how to calculate that later. So, and location, that was location one, location two. Same with location three, we'll have to do that calculation. But I know what location four is gonna be. So two and three, I'll leave a couple spots for those. And location underscore four is equal to wire dimer. These are things we know already. So let's put all that stuff in there. So that's what we know. So now what I did to get pitch point locations at four and three here, these locations, instead of making the distance a wire diameter away, if I make the distance a wire diameter away here, uh, the transition might be too quick. The coil will come up and it will just not look right and I will demonstrate that when we're done. I'll, I'll force I'll force the, the distance and I'm going to call the, the transition distance. The tran When it transitions from pitch uh, wire diameter to uh, this unknown pitch, I'm going to call this the trans transition distance. So I'm going to give that a, 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 a variable. I'm going to create a variable called uh, TD and I'm going to set that equal to now when you create parameters on the fly if it's if it's going to be a number it's going to be end up automatically being a real number and that's that's going to come in to play in a little while where I can't create I'm going to create on the fly if you put it in your relation TD equals something if you don't have it in the parameter I don't have any parameters here but I'm just going to put as an example TD equals one hit the check mark and you can see it created the parameter for me but it created a real number it's they can't create if you do it on the fly it can't create anything but a real number so we'll go through that when we get to uh, more relations okay we'll come back to this TD we don't know what that is I'm gonna do some calculations show how I done it I'm just gonna paste this stuff in for now just to make it easier uh, I do know what the grind material is now. Grind material is going to equal to the grind angle. I'm going to have to have a, 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 a dimension called grind angle, and I'm going to go ahead and create that. Now I'll do that in a minute, and uh, it's going to be multiplied by the uh, divided by 360 and multiplied by the wire diameter. That's what the the material is going to be. So right now I haven't got this dimension yet. I haven't. I just pasted this stuff in from a spring I already did. So I'm going to comment it out with a forward slash star. In relations, nothing is read after a forward slash star. So like down here, it doesn't read this part. But I do know what the rough length is. Well, the rough length is going to be, and that's right now, when I have it right at 180, the rough length is just going to be um, the, uh, the height. The rough length is just going to be the height. But now when the grind material increases, the rough length is going to have to increase. But notice that the... Uh, the rough length is actually, there's not, there's a half of one here and a half of one there. The distance from all the way here to all the way here is not HT. So I'm going to have to subtract a wire diameter. So I subtract a wire diameter for it here. So I'm going to say it's equal to the H plus two times the grind material. I've got grind on both ends, but I'm going to have to subtract the wire diameter to get back to these points here. So if I go to grind material, I'll go out to here. And that's not where my sweep is going to go. My sweep starts at the is just a long height. So the rough length is uh, all the way out to uh, right now. It's height because if you take and do two grind materials, it's just going to their half a wire diameter right now. So this will be zero right now. Two times grind materials half uh, the grind materials. I have a wire diameter. So two times that is a wire diameter minus a wire diameter going to give you the start and stop points. It's just going to equal height. In this can, case, right now, later I'm going to be naming it H height, but right now I've got it named HT. And we'll come back to that. So right now my rough length is equal to HT plus two grind materials minus a wire diameter. And that, that works out. You could do the math, and that works out. So what I'm going to do to find where this next pitch point comes, this one out here, the location of pitch point three, I'm going to call TD meaning transition distance. So I'll just use that TD. I'm just going to say that's going to be the rough length, which I've calculated up here, divided by the coils minus one. What I'm doing is I'm just, at, like say, imagine this. This right now has a pitch of one, the same as wider. What if it had a pitch of two? Imagine the distance pitch two. So I'd, I'd, not be, I'd be missing this middle coil. What I'm doing is I'm taking all the spaces in between those points, though every one of those, the spaces are one less than the total number of coils. So I'm taking the rough length 
and divide it by the spaces. How many spaces I'm going to end up? I'm going to end up with uh, uh, the rough length minus one spaces. And then I'm just going to subtract a wire diameter because it is a function of wire diameter. As the wire gets smaller, I want the transition point to move, transition distance to move more this way. And I'll illustrate that uh, when I go force the TD to be equal to some the wire diameter. Like say, I could, if I made TD equal to the wire diameter, it will look fine for certain springs. But when you have a spring that has a very, very small diameter compared to its distance, it's going to look funny. This is going to stop it from doing that. It's going to, I'm calculating what the transition distance needs to be based on uh, the size of the wire. Depends on the size of the wire. Like the big wire, the transition distance, you know, really should be one. But the smaller the wire gets compared to the gap, this needs to move. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that when we, when we get there. So I'm creating TD on the fly also. Okay, so TD is on the fly. It's going to just give me um, a new parameter right now. I only have one parameter. Well, I've got, oh, I thought I did that already. Um, I, I guess I'm creating rough dimension. I'm rough length then. So if I hit the check mark, I've got an error here. Let's see where my error, oh, I don't have coils to find yet. So I need coils, and I'm going to also need the grind angle. So let's go put that in. I just copied this from a part that I've already done just to make things easier. So I'm going to comment that out with a forward slash star, and that should let me out of here. And now i got to get, uh, I need a grind angle, and I'm also going to need a number of coils. And I think I'll put the number of coils into this sketch. I'm going to create an angle to represent the number of coils. I think I'm going to put it from here to here. Just draw a line from here down to here. And go, let it go all the way over to there. Yeah. Or maybe from here. I'm just trying to figure out where that distance is going to be. Yeah. Let's go this way. And right now, that angle is here. And this is going to represent how many coils. I'm going to make this drive coils. So I'm going to start with, let's say, seven coils okay 